All right, so this is going to be a little crash course on UV unwrapping. And uh, it's pretty simple, but it can quickly spiral into more advanced territory, especially if you're trying to do things like baking high polys to low polys. But uh, we're going to keep it kind of simple here in this one. We're going to talk about the tools. We're going to experiment with some hard surface stuff, and then we'll also do some organic stuff. So it should be a lot of fun. Now, um, what we're going to do first is go over to the UV editing tab here. And um, this panel, if you press in, you can bring it out. This is not something you'll see. This is an add-on, paid add-on, but it'll usually be set to image here first. So let's talk about the UV space. First of all, uh, there's an X axis, so left to right X, and then up and down is Y. So keep that in mind when you move something. Um, it'll go up here, it'll be 1. If it's at the top, if it's at the bottom, it'll be a 0, and vice versa. So X left is 0, right is 1. All right, so you can actually place these things uh, wherever you need to, but usually your UV map needs to be contained within this tile, okay? All right, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and prep this view over here so it's a little easier to work with. And um, if you just mouse wheel over, you can get to your shader uh, drop down. This is useful. And we're going to turn on back face calling, turn on cavity, set it to world, turn up a little bit of the cavity there. We got um, specular lighting, turn that off. And we're going to set this to texture for now, okay? It's going to let us see our texture. For our material base color, should have one already applied. Uh, we can go ahead and set image texture, click new, and when we create a new one here, we're going to use all defaults except generated type. We're going to change this to UV grid. Okay, click OK, and there we go. We have a uh, checker pattern, which is cool because this lets you see if your uh, UV maps are distorted in the 3D view here, and that's quite nice. So, it can also let you adjust things. Um, by lining up the uh, the patterns just right and all that stuff. So over here, you'll notice we have this drop down for image. In this case, we can actually change UV grid to color grid if we wanted to. So that's nice. And uh, we can line our UVs up to a texture if we had one loaded. So if I go ahead and load one real quick, click open. I'm going to go to my texture library. I actually have some more um, checker patterns here. We'll go to checker maps. And um, these you can download on Gumroad. They're available there. I'm going to load up this uh, 2048 here, open image, and it loads up like so. All right, and so you can change between these if you need to. It's coming up here using the drop down, which is really nice, but sometimes it's a little distracting. You can just click X and you're back to where you were. Whenever your image jumps in and out, it changes the size of the UV space, so just keep that in mind. If you had a um, UV space that was, or, or if you have an image that's not a square, right? It's not a square aspect ratio. Your UV space will actually behave kind of weird where it actually makes your UVs act like they get squished like this. And so I don't recommend actually working with non-squared um, textures inside of Blender because of that reason. It gets a little weird working with, but nonetheless. All right, let's go over to the view tab. Here in the view tab, there's a little section called pixel coordinate for the display. If you check that on, we go back to image. Uh, and now right here, these vertices, instead of being 0 through 1, it's now using pixels. By default, this square acts like a 256 by 256. But if you had another image loaded, such as that texture map I loaded up, which was 2048 by 2048, you'll see that it changes the numbers here. This is useful if you're using texture atlases, where you have maybe multiple seamless textures on a sheet, where you want to go ahead and use those repeatedly with uh, geometry that supports that. So you can actually line up a, um, a single face, if you wanted to, to certain uh, areas by pixel. So you could say you know, this needs to be 512 by 512 pixels, and that's good. Because ultimately, what's going to end up happening is as you start to texture models that you want to put into video games or whatever the case may be, you're going to realize that you actually have to try to match the texel density on the different um, assets that you're creating. Because if the densities are too wildly varying, a lot of players notice that, and it's actually very distracting. So, uh, Texel Density right here. This is an add-on. It's free. You can download it. Link in the description. Texel Density Checker will actually help you figure out uh, what's going on with your Texel Density here. So, this texture size is 2048. I could change that. We have all the UVs selected. We can calculate Texel Density, and we can see we're using only 37.5% of this UV space. So, that's very inefficient. Usually, you want to hit something like... Um, 80% roughly is, is a good spot, you know, a little bit lower maybe, but the density is very low, 2.56 pixels a centimeter. Um, a first-person shooter, for example, uh, generally speaking, a good texel density for that is 10.24 pixels a centimeter. 
So for every meter in the game, it has uh, 1024 pixels on it, right? You can see where this is going. UV mapping at, in general is simple. And then when you start to get more into it, it starts to become more and more complicated, all right? So just pointing that out real quick. That's a cool add-on. Go grab it. It's pretty useful. Um, uh, next, next thing here, um, under image here, this is using a source of single image. Uh, you can use movies, you can use image sequences. Um, you can do, of course, generated like we did before, but there's also something called UDIM tiles. And so UDIM tiles are really interesting because we're going to check it over there. We're going to turn it on. And right now it doesn't look like much has changed, but in your shader, when you click shading here, you'll see that this is all loaded into a shader, principled BSDF shader. All right. So this texture lines up into that like so. Now in a video game, every time you use a different shader, generally speaking, it's going to add draw calls to the game. And that's going to be a performance hit. So one of the cool workarounds for this, and a lot of VFX guys use this as well for um, an asset that might have large textures all over it. What you'll find is that you can actually use multiple textures with a single object with um, multiple textures with a single shader, right? So the way this works out is if we check view here, there's a little spot for this right here, you dim grid, grid size. You can actually start bumping out grids if you want to be able to view these grids, right? And you can also go up with them, which is cool. Uh, but you don't necessarily have to do that right away. Uh, what we can do is under image here, you'll see we have you dim tiles, 101, 1001. Okay, we can click the plus sign here and create another tile. So you can set resolution and all this fun stuff in here. Uh, but the number is pretty much just going to go up by itself but you can change the amount of counts. So let's say we wanted to add an additional three. There we go, bam. So now we can expand this um, UV space out in this direction. Now, not every game project will of course use UDIMs, but it's a pretty important thing to know because you might be doing a character and you want one for the face, you want one for the body, one for the legs or whatever the case, right? And so that's what that ends up doing right there. We're gonna be working with one and we're not gonna be using the UDIM system, but uh, we're gonna be working with a single image for now, right? Now, single image, there's just a few different kinds of basic textures. There's a seamless texture, there's a regular one-to-one -one map, which is like a picture of something maybe, or you unwrap the model and it's all one-to-one -one, uh, UV maps, meaning there's a UV for every face on it. Um, and then there's also something called um, trim sheets, right? So trims, seamless textures, and atlases. So seamless would be a square image, that's completely seamless next to itself. So you can tile it across um, a single polygon multiple times. And then, but a uh, trim is usually seamless in the X axis. And sometimes it's seamless with itself in the Y axis, but it'll be like a stack of different seamless textures that usually just go left to right. And then um, if you're using an Atlas, of course, it's a bunch of individual textures all tossed onto one image that may be seamless in themselves, or maybe not. And so, uh, keep that in mind. You can combine these kind of together. It's just the different names that people gave them, I guess. But uh, you could have like a trim sheet half of the way and then have an atlas below it or something like that. So uh, there's a lot of different scenarios when you're going to texture things differently. You might use UDIMs, you might use uh, trim, you might use an atlas. It just really depends on what you're creating and what kind of quality you need out of it as well. So, you know, you might not be able to always hit a high... Uh, pixel density if that's the case, right? Now, when it comes to UV mapping itself, it's really quite simple. Uh, you usually, uh, the easiest way to work with a, a model and, and to set up a UV map is to just simply place seams. So that's what we're gonna do here in this example. We're gonna stretch this all out, get it going, and we're gonna kind of create a little uh, sci-fi shape here real quick. I'm just gonna use a knife, I cut through this manner. So there we go. Let's go ahead and uh, select all the way around here inset by hitting i and then hold control you can do that number so we're going to make this shape here first now there are some considerations when you're modeling usually when you're creating a hard surface models a lot of times you might have just like a beveled corner so when you bevel something keep in mind mouse wheel up here and we have a bevel going on a lot of times you want to use segments that are even numbers that gives you a center edge Okay, and this is probably one of the better places to put a seam on a rounded corner like this. Um, if you're using a sharp edge, obviously use the edge there, but you should get the idea with that pretty quick, right? It's not too hard. And so we can bevel things if needed, et cetera, et cetera. And so we'll do these two back ones here. Oop. 
I want to bring these all the way up. So Alt and Shift, selecting, doing all that fun stuff like that, right? So we can do that number if needed. And we we could we could bevel this one too. Why not? There we go. So you can see that was a little too far on that one, perhaps. Let's do it a little bit less. There we go. This texture can be distracting a lot of times, so you do have to come up here and switch it back to material, usually. Uh, if you have that UV Toolkit add-on, which is a paint add-on, uh, it gives you a pie menu with Shift-F, and you can see your toggle color modes on and off, so that's quite useful. Also, these wireframes, in my opinion, get in my way, so I turn them off. And um, I don't have anything to line up to here as I'm working, plus it'll make the tutorial a little bit harder to see, so I'm going to just exit out of that texture. Edit mode start to play with this guy here now very very easy way to create a seam is to of course select your edges and press ctrl e and mark seam if at all possible like say this is a symmetrical object right if you had it cut in half so if you do a loop cut ctrl r loop cut loop cut loop cut there you go um, if you had something cut in half you could mirror it over again later so you don't have to work both sides of it at the same time that's going to save you a little bit of time and effort there Okay, you see here these two did not connect, so uh, let's go ahead and just cut out this middle section here, in, or the side section. Middle section has the origin point, so it will mirror over um, directly, the, mirror, the origin points in the middle. So, all right, we got all that out of the way. Let's go ahead and keep going. Um, so, right here, I'm just going to mark these as seams real quick. Okay. Let's go around and make my selections, basically. You do this correctly, it should unfold. Like it's origami or something, right? It shouldn't be that, that hard to uh, make it happen. So this will actually unwrap around this corner. Okay. And so uh, this top section, I'm going to actually add a seam here. I'm going to add a seam down here. You can see we're kind of cutting it up. All right. You want to try to use as few cuts as possible, but there's going to be times you literally have to just cut it up, and um, there's not much else you can do for it. Right? So you're going to have to add seams whether you like it or not. And then working out those seams in Substance Painter, or when you're doing your texture work, can be a, a whole nother video all on its own. So they all play off of one another. So in this situation, you can see here. Uh, this all comes back to this little area like this. I don't really care for this kind of cut I'm going to have to make, but it's it's something that might occur to you. So try doing something like that maybe. I don't know. I don't like that either. So we'll cut here. Mark that seam. Clear this one. So cut back up this way if we want, or we could try to leave it there. So if you get a chance to not cut something, uh, sometimes it's good not to do it. So if I was to clear this here, um, this would actually unfold this way, like a pizza box or something, right? And um, I might be able to do that up here as well. And um, mark a seam here. I might not need that seam. Who knows? So let's figure out what's going to work and what's not by uh, selecting it all, pressing U. There's a lot of different options in here. We're just going to use the first one, which is unwrap. Okay, cube projection, cylinder, cylinder projection, and, and sphere projection are pretty useful for doing like really quick, dirty stuff with a seamless texture. Um, however, project from view and um, project from view bounds, a lot of VFX guys use this and old school um, 3D modelers because that's kind of one of the first things that came up. But a smart UV project is, um, is pretty interesting. We'll talk about that one in a little bit, but... Uh, Light map pack is going to create just little squares for light maps. And then uh, follow active quads is, is uh, another thing entirely. Okay, so take a look at that later. I press uh, U, unwrap, and now we can see we have it all unwrapped like so. Now take note here that you can set a margin, and this is to help texture bleed. So when you're texturing something and you have mip maps in a game, uh, they'll bleed a little bit, so they have a little bit of um, extra pixels on the sides. Usually, the smaller the image, the less you need. So, like a 512, maybe you need like two or f two to four pixels max. 
And then um, as you go up higher, such as like a 4K image, you might need something more like 8 to 16. It just depends on how you have it set up and what you're putting it into, like what kind of software. Um, this looks okay-ish. I don't think there's anything too wrong with it, but um, there's two different modes or methods of unwrapping. There's angle-based and conformal. Angle's good for organics. Conformal's good for doing uh, more hard surface stuff. So we're going to change it to conformal. We'll see it actually starts to lay it out a little bit more like so, which is actually pretty nice. It's not too bad. Just space it out a little bit. Not too bad. All right. Let's take a look at it over here with the texture on it. So you can go and toggle texture back on if you want. And um, we can kind of look at it and see if anything's going on. It looks completely out of place. I can tell you that for the most part, it looks okay. I'm not going to say it looks great, but there's some things that are eh, maybe questionable, you know? And so, um, but for the most part, this is this is pretty much what you're trying to do. This isn't, isn't much more than this, okay? So a lot of times it's real easy to work with, um, you know, little sections that are like halves or panels, things that are kind of like shells in a way, right? And so in the crevices is usually where you want to pl pl place your seams. But sometimes it's unavoidable. And you have to place them up around the edges like so. And so um, this one actually worked out okay. I don't know if it's going to be beneficial to have that there uh, necessarily. So I'm going to actually add that one back real quick. So we're going to mark that seam. And when I press A, U, and unwrap, you'll see that, matter of fact, uh, this lays out much nicer and occupies much more space. There's a trick, though. We're not done because we have another half of an object that needs UVs. So, um, but we can take a look at it with Texel Density Checker and calculate it real quick. You see that this is now using almost 50%, which is better, but not, not perfect. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and mirror this over. Go to the Modifier panel. We'll do a mirror. Okay, we'll bisect it flip it, apply the mirror, go into edit mode, A, M, merge by distance, and now we can just simply press U, unwrap, and we'll get two sides of this now. Okay, so the whole front is one piece, there's no seam in the middle, and um, everything else laid out accordingly. Uh, whatever this piece is here, I don't like the way it's unwrapping. Okay, so usually something that looks like this, that probably means something's going on that's a little bit wrong. Uh, let's say I don't know where this piece is. If you come up here to the top left, there's UV selection sync. And uh, this will actually let you select the objects here in the UV editor. And it will show up as well over here. So if I press L on this, I could select the whole object. For whatever reason, the island selection disappears. Because normally we could do vertex edges and faces and islands. But when you turn UV sync on, it disappears. So you got to press L now to select. And you can see it's this piece back here. Okay. There's no real obvious reason why this should unfold incorrectly, but it is. So what I'm going to do is assume that it's something to do with being right there, maybe slightly this like little bevel kind of shape to it there. And so we can place additional seams if we think it will help it. And that's not a big deal, but like I said, put it up in your crevices or cracks or whatever the case of your model uh, is usually beneficial. So if we unwrap this again, we'll see that this actually does unwrap much nicer now because of those splits uh, with those seams. So uh, that's not too bad, right? Works out pretty fairly well, I'd say. Uh, we could probably get it a little bit better by introducing additional seams. So more accuracy, you add more seams. And um, find that balance is the hard part. So this is a little bit nicer. And I could probably just bump these real tight to each other. Let's see what we're at now. And we're at 56%. So still not very great. All right. And um, so manually laying these out is extremely important. You want to turn this guy back off, though, whenever you get a chance. And so we can use islands. Uh, but manually laying these out is something you're going to end up doing. The unavoidable consequence of um, using UV, um, using a native, blend, native blender here. Um, there's a add-on called UV Pack Master, which... We'll try to figure out the most optimal solution, um, and it works really well. Matter of fact, we'll just run it real quick. It's, this isn't meant to be a... We'll do a quick demo. Pack those islands. Okay, and we can also set the spacing on it so that they're a little closer together right now, but let's separate them a little bit more. Okay, and you can see current area is 0.732, so this is actually at 73%. It's going to keep trying to figure out the best solution here. You can see we're already at 75%. 
And so this add-on is actually really awesome. This is Packmaster 2, Packmaster 3 is out though. So you can definitely uh, go check that out. Now, um, you know, I probably wouldn't think of this off the top of my head, but I'm going to venture a guess that if I'm really clever about what I do, I could probably beat 75%. So that's another option. Press U, unwrap, get this number going again. Um, just keep in mind, if you say like you worked an island and you can rotate these, scale them, move them around, but you don't want to, Generally, you don't want to shift things around too much because it's going to cause stretching. Um, but let's say we're working this mesh and it, we need to see if it's stretching and stuff. We can come over here. So mouse wheel over to this guy. Display stretch. We can see um, we can see the display stretch by angle there. Right now, there's no real angle stretching going on for the most part. There's a little bit right here that might change this color, but it's not that bad. But uh, area stretch is something different. And so you can see because I scaled this one up, it's actually area stretched. And that's just something to pay attention to because anytime you select an island and scale them differently than each other, it starts to do that number. Okay. All right. With that out of the way, there's some other options in here you can play with. But we're going to turn the stretching off. Not too weird. Actually, we'll leave it on, but we'll leave it on for uh, angle. So if we do stretch with angle, we'll see it. All right. And... um. All right, so if we want to uh, kind of resize these all so they're in coordination with each other again, we could go to UV, and we can do uh, seams. Oops, sorry, not seams from us. We can do um, average island scales, and that's going to kind of re-average them together. And you have to have them all selected to do that, but you can also repack islands. Uh, that's the automatic blender packing method. You see here, it's the closest UDIM, and it, uh, you know, it's so it's okay, -ish, I guess, but. Let's see what else we got in here. Uh, we do have um, proportional editing. So if you press O, you can turn that on and off. That's going to be the same as if you're modeling an object, except um, select uh, something, press G to move. You got a mouse wheel, right? You can proportional edit things. This is quite useful for like characters and organics. Um, so you can play around with those, do connected only, etc. Um, we have snapping increment and vertex. Uh, vertex for me has been not working right lately so I don't haven't been able to use it but uh, whatever the case hopefully that gets fixed or maybe blender devs know about it hopefully and the um, you have also the different types of origins so individual 2d cursor medium points and bounding box centers and stuff like that which is yeah, so whatever you know um, the live unwrap mode we're not going to get into it snap things like kind of the pixels like I was saying earlier you can actually snap to the pixels though which is nice and so you have snap to um, all those different things in here as well. So pinning is actually pretty interesting. It lets you pin something. So if you right-click, you can pin it. And if you were to press U and unwrap again, you'll see that it doesn't move right until you select it and move it. Um, the automatic unwrap there doesn't change it around. We go ahead and uh, we can do seams from islands. So this is actually pretty interesting. We've already tagged our seams, but if we hit Control E, we can clear seams, right? Uh, but we still have all the UVs there, so we can actually select all of this over here, and we could do uh, seams from islands, and we can add the seams back if we do, I guess. Um, you can you can actually unwrap things. Let me unpin this real quick. Okay, so like say I wanted to just UV map this area for some reason right here. I can press U and unwrap it, okay? Because it has a seam, it's going to do this right now. But if there was no seam there, um, and it was just a brand new model, I'll make a, a duplicate real quick, just a demo. It's clear seams. Let's say all this was S and 0, right? So scale at 0. And I wanted to just unwrap this area real quick. I can just select it, press U, unwrap. And then you don't have to have the seams. Okay. Um, also a good point to bring up right now is the... Um, Smart UV project, the way this thing works, smart UV project, it's based off angle limit. So it's set by default to 66 degrees. It works pretty well at that. Click OK. It lays it out just automatically. And you can also adjust the island margins, right? And um, it doesn't get everything perfect, though. And that's just the downside of it. You, you know, you, it's better to do it. Usually, it's better to do your UV maps uh, by marking your seams than use an auto project. But sometimes this is useful if you're just trying to create like real quick, real quick 
uh, renders that things don't need to be very precise, right? Instead of fighting there, trying to create UV maps all day, do something like that, right? For a lot of game objects, you want to do something a little bit more like this. So I'm just going to re-unwrap it. Where did that come from? Which one is this? What is this? Is that new? Looks new, huh? Was that there always? <laughs> Alright, so that's interesting. Did there. Let's merge everything by distance real quick. It's you unwrap. Okay, that got rid of it apparently. I guess I separated it or something. Alright. With that out of the way, um, we can certainly um, also lay these on top of each other. So Let's turn this off. Select by island. Um, some of these you can line up to each other. So as you rotate, hold control, usually you can get them pretty close. Um, perfect with each other. Then you can also right click and mirror these. So it'll flip your UV. And as a result, if you had text on this UV, you would probably have inverted text. So you're doing texturing like that anyway. But if you don't have anything unique, or you don't need anything unique on each side of this model, you can certainly do this, all right? But here's a fun little tidbit. We can align them manually if we really want to. But if you have symmetry, delete half of your model, right? Unwrap something. You get it like this. And then uh, maybe you go through and you... Set this up very carefully, however you think would be most efficient. So I'm just going to move some things around real quick. So a lot of game models reuse textures, different parts of an object. This is something you might be able to do. Get away with all these out real quick. I can I can probably get away with Let's push them in a little bit tighter. I guess the biggest problem is this is too long. I could fit the rest in here, but that's too long. So um, sometimes you can make sacrifices on scale or sizes here, and you might be able to push something in a little bit more. You just don't want to overdo it usually overdo it that's when it becomes a real big problem so like I can maybe get this going a little bit tighter too let's move it all over see where we're at so all right so this is right here gonna be just inside the UV seams if I was to cut out this whole outside corner that gives me all this space down here for just this one little individual section. All right. So I'll probably work it back down in this direction. Usually work into one corner and then back to the other. Works out pretty well. So I can try to tightly pack these in as much as I need. Really probably not a need to tight, tighten them up too much. If I get away with something like that right there. This one can go just a little bit smaller, but a little bit larger. Okay. So could probably be a little bit better, but you get the idea. All right, so we can take the whole thing, scale it into this whole square now. Let's see what our texel density ends up at. With this, okay. Check it. We're at 68%. So quite a bit better. Not perfect, but uh, we could certainly keep moving these around and getting that even better than that. So, um, but with all that in mind, we can now uh, mirror this again. Flip it over, and we can bisect it, flip it if needed, or whatever. Uh, press uh, Control A, apply it. Go into Edit Mode. A M Merge by Distance 0 0.01. This UV is actually mirrored across a bit. Too, so we can actually 
calculate the texel density now, and we can see we're at 136%. Because we're overlapping UVs, it's much, much, much more than efficient. So that's what ends up happening. That's why a lot of games end up using same texture on multiple sides of an object. So that's just something to keep in mind, all right? So that's just a um, kind of a simple, quick demo of a... Um, hard surface shape anyways of course they can get much more complicated than this and you might have to lay out a lot of stuff and that's where things get a little bit interesting because um, you know you you might actually need to if you're doing really complicated things you might need to get pack master um, and then toolkit might help you out as well but generally speaking if you just model very carefully uh, usually lay things out by hand relatively easy to be honest and then um, but Pack Master, when you have like a bunch of really complicated small UV shells, is is definitely, I think, very beneficial. So, but keeping things in larger chunks is preferable, right? Okay, so with that in mind, let's do an organic shape. I'm just going to start with the plane, bring it up real quick, and then uh, once we're done with this one, we have gotten through the UV tutorial, right? Um, I'm going to start modeling a uh, something like a squid, right? Actually, we'll model squid. Plane. And um, this one down, and bring this one up. I want to make like a little eyeball in here, so I do this number, loop tools, circle, fill in. Okay, see where this is going? Pretty simple, right? Modeling uh, soft bodies. Usually, you're going to use a subdivision surface modifier, of course. So a lot of my videos I've done talk about uh, hard surface sub D, which um, is act actually not going to be um, as useful as organic sub D, I think. Because this, you'll see why this just starts to look pretty cool real quick, and um, definitely something you need to learn to do is how to sub D model, especially for characters. In this case, I'm going to actually extremely push some of this stuff out um, and start working it in different ways. So in this case, I want this one to go in. I'm in setting, just going to hold Control, do this number, this section here. Uh, I'm going to do a inset, hold control, push it out like this. So normally you would have an eyeball as like a separate object, but in this case we're just going to leave it all as a thing. So we end up with this number. When I hit control 2, we get a subdivision surface, and we can see what's going on. Okay. Um, I might want this front section to be a little bit skinnier. Okay. And I'm going to do a loop cut here. And all of these, I'm going to actually um, inset them real quick. We get this number going on. Oh, you know what? Before we do that, let's inset it and then inset it again. I'm going to do two. Okay. Gives me a little gap between them. Okay. So I'm just simply going to uh, I want to model this as if it was. Uh, I'm not trying to I'm going to press uh, Alt-E, extrude faces along normals here. I'm not trying to model this in a T-pose so we can rig it and animate it and all that. I just want to get a bunch of stuff going real quick. So I'm just pressing E and extruding, and E, extrude. And you'll see real quick that these start to um, become kind of the wrong shape. And that's something to be expected when you when you do something like that in that manner. Um, there's other ways of extruding, by the way. So you can try hitting Control and right-clicking. Um, and you can see that's still... Eh. Not so preferable. Uh, one of my favorite things to do though is actually just uh, use ring selection and you can fix all this super fast. Uh, fairly well, not perfectly, but I have you have to go back through and manually adjust some of this stuff. So just keep that in mind. And um, so what we're going to do is use select more here. It's on my mouse, so I just do that number. And hit uh, Shift H to hide everything else. Now I can select by edge, and I'm gonna select by ring. So select loops, edge ring. So I hit Alt, click a loop, and then um, select by ring. I can do that number. So I can do that to all of these at the same time. So if I hit Alt and Alt and Shift and click and select these edges, super fast. And do out like that. And once I have all the rings selected, I can go into Loop Tools and I can hit um, Circle. And it'll kind of square them all back up real quick. Um, and then this gets a little bit better because I can actually just uh, turn on X-Ray. 
hit alt z use cursor selector get rid of a couple of these i can rotate um, individually using machine tools here so this is going to be um, normal and individual origins to rotate like this. Um, and we can kind of tweak things however we see fit right so it's kind of fun how you can work all, a bunch of stuff like this together at the same time interesting anyway it doesn't always work out but a lot of times it does i think we can get these ones kind of going right maybe sort of not really all right and um yeah interestingly enough it's okay-ish but uh, maybe these ones over here uh, i'm just going to scale these out or actually i'm going to um grab them real quick what i'm going to do is i'm going to press alt s to individually push them out like this and uh but i'm going to use proportional edit at the same time in proportional edit we're going to use connected only so it only affects the ones nearby it so when i press alt s they don't all influence each other only their strands you see here it's it's uh, affecting the base as well i don't know if that's going to affect it a lot lot but let's do something like this right press alt h bring that back see what's going on here at the base not too bad uh, so what i'm going to do is select all of it hit um control v and smooth vertices and it'll help that out a little bit and we can grab these and pull them out a little bit further if we did something like that set a little uh, curve just for the fun of it so you can do that for individual ones that's what connected only does right there makes it way more useful in my opinion. just so happens the way we modeled that that works out quite well doesn't it okay so if i right click shade it smooth we have a subdivision on it I might want these bases a little bit bigger. They're a little bit too small. For me. Or at least uh, a little bit more flush. In edit mode, turn subdivision on. That's cool. In my opinion. Um, Control-V, smooth vertices. You can see they get smaller. Alt-S. Turn off proportional edit. Alt-S. We can make them a little bit thicker. Like that. All right? Really wild, right? Okay, so um, here's the trick about this. We're going to UV unwrap this. Now, of course, you can unwrap in a lot of different ways at a lot of different points and have all kinds of different results. Um, for tentacles like this, generally speaking, or, or for um, cylindrical shapes, squares, cubes, whatever, um, the backside hidden part of this, um, for these kinds of, well, not really so much about the shape, it's about this particular object. Um, the backsides here are generally the best place to hide the seams, so that's where you want to mark seams for this right and they go all the way to the end here so we're going to mark seam just like that um, these little tips a lot of times you can take them down to a single vertex some people say don't do that but um, you can it doesn't look as good in my opinion so take them down pretty small and then just delete that in face and um, you can combine this again later on uh, and fill those gaps but a lot of times that helps um, when you're making selections so that you don't run around because these just happen to be cubes but if they were cylinders and will run a loop all the way back through and around you really want to do that when you're working with it but um, nonetheless let's keep going here on this a little bit so we could place seams in other areas of course um, but a lot of times having um, seams and crevices like i said is, is most useful and so Sometimes they're hard to see, though. Sometimes it's hard to tell what's going on. So these organic shapes, this is something you might be looking at doing. Now, the biggest problem with organic shapes, you're, gonna, you're definitely going to run into this, is that uh, even though you mark these seams here and you unwrap this and you think everything's good to go, right? I'm going to put another one right here in the corner of this eye. This doesn't really technically need one. If if you had a mesh with a hole here and an actual model of an eyeball, you wouldn't need a seam here at all. But because we modeled it as part of it, um, we're going to put a seam here. So let's say this is maybe a statue, not necessarily a, um, an actual character. In which case, you probably would model the eye, but it's part of it anyways. So we can, of course, drag this kind of stuff out, use proportional edit, 
change the eye shape here a little. Squished. Something like that. All right. So we have plenty of seams now, I think. Cover this whole thing. All right. And so if I press A, U, and unwrap, this is the result we get. And at first glance, it looks fine. Like, there's nothing really wrong with this. Um, and then if we were to place the checkered material on it, you'll see it looks just fine until you realize we're subdividing here. And um, even though we're subdividing um, right now, it should be mostly okay, believe it or not. Uh, but there's a trick to the subdivision model that needs to be explained real quick. And it people call this um, pre-smoothing a... Um, mesh or uvs or whatever you want to call it and so uh, what's going on is when this subdivision hits and you apply it you take a look at certain areas what we'll see is that say see if i can find a good spot i think right by the base of the tentacle might be a spot yeah so right by the base these areas here right uh, these are starting to get stretched these are already stretched here those are good examples too i think but uh, that's a little bit of a problem because if you don't have any subdivision on something you'll see it's very little stretching and then right here it's starting to stretch a lot okay it's starting to look pretty stretched um, this is because when you subdivide and you're using a subdivision surface modifier let's go ahead and bring another one out is that a sub d modifier you'll see here that under advanced the UV smoothing is keep boundaries. So it's holding every one of these little points, right? And then it's smoothing on top of that. So it's actually stretching out the corners here. And that's not really ideal, but there is a slight little workaround that helps stop this a little bit. And that is when you have a mesh that you're going to uh, uh, subdivide and you want to be, you know, perfect, right? You want to have the best UVs possible for it. Uh, so instead of working it from this and trying to UV map this and then add subdivision on top of that, you want to pre-subdivide it. That's the trick. So you can see it's a big change, a big change here between this and this, right? And then between this and this, not so much. It's just a little bit nicer. So we can take this subdivision, level one, apply it, and then add another um, level one or level two subdivision to that, right? And now what we'll see is that a lot of this is alleviated. In this case, not too much either. Oh, you know what? Sorry. I got to take that back for a second. We have to re-unwrap this. Uh, we can press U, unwrap, and re-unwrap it. Okay? So once we uh, re-unwrap it here, you'll see that it's all alleviated, first of all, um, which is nice. But that's kind of getting ahead of myself here. Let's try this again. So here we go. Base mesh, right? We subdivide it by one. Apply this, go into edit mode, you unwrap this, right? Now we subdivide it again. Go back into edit mode. And uh, if we were to apply this one now up here, see how much it stretched. And you'll notice that uh, very quickly it's still stretching, but it's not nearly as bad as it was, right? So there's not as much stretch at all. And so this is an extremely important thing that you can do, which is pre-subdivide pre it once. So subdivide it once, apply it. And now when you go and press U and unwrap it, let's take this back. We'll go through the process one more time so you get a better understanding. You take this, that, that mesh you originally modeled that you had subdivided, subdivide it once, apply it. Go into edit mode, all right? You're going to press U and unwrap, right? And that will fix most of that, right? When you subdivide again, it's going to end up um, having a little bit of stretching if you were to apply this one, right? So there's a trick about subdivision here and um, unwrapping, which is when you press U to unwrap, you can use the subdivision surface result for the unwrap. And as a result, you can switch this on, right? as you subdivide, as long as you have a subdivision modifier. So you pre-subdivide one time, apply it, add a subdivision one or two times. Usually uh, keep it lower, it's easier to unwrap. And um, now this time, if you were to say even bump this up to like two, three or whatever and apply it, 
when you go back into edit mode now, what you're going to find out is that when you look at this mesh, up close and personal, again, it's still stretching just ever, ever so slightly. Okay. So this is something you can look for um, when you're doing this. This is not a problem. For the most part, it's not going to be any issue. Um, because you might have little seams here that you need to make sure are absolutely perfect. And that's something that will help out for things like that. Now, um, there's other methods of UV smoothing. Personally, uh, I think keep boundaries sometimes creates bad corners sometimes. Um, and But I, I prefer sometimes going to all. And I find that it creates a little bit of a more... It, it doesn't quite... Uh, hold the pixels in the right area necessarily as much. The seams can become a little bit more noticeable. But on certain objects, this this is actually preferable for me. So it just depends on the resolutions you're going for and things like that. Because if I was to you unwrap this using subdivision surface here, right? And we can see um, I do this number. We're using all now. And it, um, it's all re-unwrapped. And... This is, um, yeah, it's a little bit stretched there, but everything else, for the most part, is solid, right? And so you have to be a little bit careful uh, on how you approach these situations, right? That's all I'm trying to point out here, that there's, there's many different solutions to the same problems, and uh, you're going to have to figure out what works for you. You can also bop quality up, which is nice, and uh, do go back to uh, keep boundaries. By all means, keep boundaries. It should work best in situations. But um, all in all, you would be hard pressed to find using either of these the way we've just done it. You'd be hard pressed to find uh, seams in this mesh after that. And uh, of course, uh, tweaking it around a little bit is going to help out even more. So uh, personally, I would just um, unwrap with a higher quality and a higher subdivision. Not even think about it. And uh, so when you bump this back down, because generally speaking, I don't mind losing quality when I bump things down as much than I do about not having quality when I want it high. So because if you know you bump down the resolution on something and it's back here, you're not going to see a little tiny seam in the surface usually. But if you're up close and you're at a level three and it's like, oh, I need something to be perfect right here. Pre, pre, you know, subdivide it with the subdivision on it at a pretty high level, as as high as you can go, at least without crashing your system and having all kinds of problems. And that's just going to help you create, you know, something a little bit better, perhaps. Um, and it, it makes a little bit more sense at the end of all of this. So, um, you get you know the better results. Anyway, so that's it for this video. I know it ran on a little bit long, but there is a lot that really goes into uh, UV unwrapping and and kind of creating this stuff so it's i just find it kind of interesting that a lot of tutorials don't uh, really hit on all of these things right when they're beginners are trying to get into um, creating 3d models because this is this is pretty important information you know and so hopefully you learned a lot and you enjoyed the video if you did like the uh, video and subscribe to the channel I, i'm always you know trying to grow my counts and stuff you know why not and so uh, anyways that's it for this one though guys so uh, anyways, check you out the next one. Take care.